Alma Community Zone and Bibliographic Record Enrichment. So I thought uh, we'd start with just a little intro and welcome. So again, my name is Dahlia. I'm a metadata librarian in the Seattle office. Um, I've been eight years with ProQuest uh, and then Ex Libris mostly actually with the 360 knowledge base for the majority of my time, working with collections and title lists and things of that nature. Um, and then in 2018, starting on the Alma Community Zone with a focus on enrichment mainly and authorities, both of which we'll be talking about today. So here's an agenda of what I'd like to go over today. Um, and the goal of all of this is basically to give information, to demystify the process uh, for you all, and just allow us to work together better in the future. So I'll go through an introduction on the community zone, basically how the metadata is structured so that we're all on the same page about that. I'll touch about contributions because that's an important aspect of it. And then we'll get really into uh, the meat of the presentation, the details on the full bibliographic record enrichment. We'll do an overview. We'll talk about different kinds of vendor records. And then I think the part many of you fi might find most interesting is where I'll kind of take you under the hood to look at exactly what content does within our systems with our record import and merging. So here is an overview of the different kinds of content in the community zone. Um, I think of it as having three main parts that are all interconnected, that all work best together uh, when they are all full. So the knowledge base or central knowledge base or CKB, that's where the information about the electronic collections live, the electronic portfolios that's tightly integrated with the link resolver, with the full text linking. And that really works together when we have full bibliographic records, which we'll be talking about today, which are and then tied to our authority vocabularies of rich subject um, and name information. Um, so I think important for the structure of the community zone is we have a one record policy. So that means that when we have the same ebook or e journal on several different providers, platforms, uh, etc. There really ideally should be one record for all for the same instance of that ebook or e journal in the catalog. Um, and because it can be tied to many different providers, it should be neutral. It should just have the descriptive information about that ebook itself, not information about the platform that that instance is on. And so um, I think because of that structure, uh, our community catalog has evolved so that a single record has, is going to not be necessarily kind of a pure record, but comprised of information from several sources potentially. So just to show you visually an example of it, this is a title I like, 10,000 Nights, Highlights from 50 Years of Theater Going. I haven't read it, but I want to. Um, and so this, this title, this record that you see a snippet of here is tied to several different providers, JSTOR, eBook Central, EBSCO, Muse. Um, and because of that, the record is ideally going to not have specific information from each of those providers, but um, just the information about 10,000 nights within. Um, and in this case, of those providers you see there, we get um, full MARC records from Project Muse and eBook Central. So we'll look at this record a little later. You'll see that we'll, we will have actually information from both of those providers in a single record. And again, the vocabularies, I wanted to just mention this briefly, even though this isn't the focus, because it's such a big part of content of what my team does. So content is responsible for the additions and regular updates for about 28 authorities that we have centrally managed in the community zone, encompassing many different regions, many different languages. I'm not going to pull it up now, but there's a full list. 
um, in the Customer Knowledge Center in the Working with Authority Records list. Um, and here are just a couple of uh, our well-known ones, the Library of Congress, EuroVoc, uh, but there are many others. And in terms of contributions, that's also a major part of the community zone. So I wanted to mention it. Um, so we can, customers can edit all of the categories you see up here, um, including direct editing of the bibliographic records, contributing portfolios for certain collections, for free collections, for miscellaneous collections. And another great resource in the Customer Knowledge Center, if you haven't seen it yet, I wanted to call out is the CUNY Zone Contribution Guidelines. It has all the specific information about how you contribute. Um, and I think really importantly on there, there's a document that was actually made together with Ex Libris and the CUNY Zone Advisory Group of User Librarians. And that document is called the ALMA Community Catalog, Cataloging Standards, Policies, Rights, and Responsibilities. And that gets into the specific mark fields that you would want to pay attention to in order to make your contributions, both follow the cataloging guidelines and be provider and institution neutral. For example, not having institution-specific notes or 856 with proxies, et cetera. Okay, so now we're going to get into uh, the enrichment process and all the details that go along with that. So we got a lot of uh, questions about this, so I wanted to clarify um, right off the bat that the bibliographic record enrichment is a two-step process. And what I mean by that is that the CKB, the knowledge base team, starts with vendor title lists. Those are used to create the electronic collections. And that's, those are usually in the KBART format, which is the NISO standard for title lists. And when those are loaded into the system, what that does is it creates these brief bibliographic records that you have all seen in the knowledge base that contain um, you know, the, the, the title, the date, um, the author, hopefully, but not the full Mark 21. And so that's the second step that, that my team comes in. So once those brief records are there, then we uh, hopefully get the vendor records, the full Mark records, and those are used to enrich those brief records. So once the second step of over uh, merging the brief records with the full uh, mark data comes in, that's when we're talking about enrichment. So I just wanted to give a few examples uh, to show uh, what we mean here. So this is a brief serial record, a brief journal for Publishers Weekly, and most of this information uh, here is coming, again, from the title list, from the KBAR list, and it's transposed into mark. And you see it has the title, it has the identifier. It does have uh, subjects here, but they're not um, associated with a particular authority. Uh, so they're, they're not connecting to our uh, authority vocabularies, the 650. Um, and then post-enrichment, it's a much fuller record. Um, so this is the record post-enrichment, post-getting a full mark record. And here is a zoom, in, a zoom in of that record, and you could see um, the O35 is indicating that it comes uh, from CONSER, um, etc. Here's another example. This is an, uh, a very brief record. This, in this case, this is just basically a title. Um, the, the linking information is going to be in the portfolio to, to, to this Andre Servan's The Trojan Woman. And, and this is what it looks like post-enrichment. This isn't even the full record. I couldn't fit it all on the screen. But um, this is the full record we get from ASP after it's been enriched. So what are the goals for enrichment here? 
So the, obviously the primary goal is that we want to get full descriptive electronic records. Um, so it's as, the title is as discoverable as possible. Uh, we want to get in these MARC records um, appropriately coded subject and name headings so that it can connect appropriately to our authority subject and name headings. We're looking for RDA records from vendors if those are available. You know, we'll take AACR2 or mixed if RDA is not available. Um, and I think important for the community though is historically an important goal has been and still an important goal is to not regress link resolution, not regress Primo searchability. So that's why you'll see certain things such as um, identifiers and relation fields um, being maintained by Ex Libra staff in the SFX all the repository rather than in many cases directly coming from the records. And I'll touch more on that a few slides later uh, when we talk about concert as well. So now I'd like to talk about the inclusion of vendor records, what we have, what we don't have, et cetera. So I think it's important to note that when we get vendor records to load in the community zone, for enrichment, we always need an agreement, or almost always in any case. And what I mean here is a legal agreement. Uh, uh, so our legal team working with the vendor to, to say, yes, you can use these records, these full records in the community zone. And so in practice, that means we're also getting the records from the vendor directly, um, whether we have permission to go to their website or via an FTP. But we can't just go to any website, any vendor's website, and just take the records. We can't take records directly from OCLC. So we are limited in that respect. And we have a lot of uh, resources in the Customer Knowledge Center um, in the content corner that I'd encourage you to look at. Um, but I wanted to highlight um, two here in especially. So the first one is the monograph record enrichment, which I will try uh, to pull up here. So this is our, our, our article in the Community Knowledge Center about monograph enrichment. And it does mention a couple of things I've talked about, the Alma cataloging, community catalog, cataloging standards document, the reviews for enrichment here. But I especially wanted to point out this list down below. So this is the list of the monograph records that we have an agreement to use in the provider zone. And I'd encourage you to take a look at this if you haven't already seen it. Um, it has, I think, right now 21 on this list. Um, and I think, importantly, if you did want to review the quality of a particular record set, um, this would tell you how to find those records. Um, in most cases, the, I think the best way is an advanced search on the originating system. Um, and then we also have an article about serial record enrichment. I won't pull that up right now um, because actually it only has two sources on it because the great majority of our serials are enriched from CONCERT, uh, which is the Cooperative Online Serials Program. Uh, made with PCC and the Library of Congress, um, and that's supplemented with the German Union catalog of serials. But that article does have some more information about particular fields, so also useful, again, in the content corner. Okay, so we have these sources for enrichment. Here are some icons, there's a few of them down below. Um, but 
but you might, uh, and it would be actually likely that you would find certain collections that we, for providers that we don't have an agreement on, uh, in which case there wouldn't be any enrichment. It would be, um, uh, unless it's been contributed by a customer, et cetera, it wouldn't have enrichment. So I wanted to highlight, though, that, that those sources could be requested if it's a new provider uh, that we don't yet track for enrichment. Uh, the idea exchange, I believe there's actually a section for bibliographic enrichment. So it can be filed there. You can get votes for it. And we can definitely look into that. All right, so let's get into um, maybe the most fun, interesting part, the record import and merge process, where we'll get into the details of really how it's done by content. Um, and I want to start with just reviewing the serials records, the concert records process, uh, because we get a lot of questions about that. Um, again, that's the Cooperative Online Serials Program for serials records. So how this works. Uh, once a week, we use an internal tool, and it, it kind of scours, scours for new records in the Alma Community Zone. And it will compare that to the weekly file uh, that we get from concert, so any additions, additional concert record, any changed concert record. Um, so what will that will do is uh, make that comparison and then create a custom MARC file. And that's imported using normalization and merging rules. The normalization is, is really minimal here, but I did want to highlight the, the merging rules. So when we have that file of uh, concert serial records, we're importing uh, the great majority of the fields exactly as is, except the ISSNs and relations. And that's because of the issue I mentioned before in terms of uh, maintaining linking, maintaining primo searchability. So because of that, those fields are historically managed by Ex Libris content staff. That doesn't mean that they're not in the record that you see in the community zone, but that they're managed internally. So for example, this is a relation field it's actually connected to the uh, publisher's weekly title that you saw briefly before, if you remember. And so this is a 785. It's a continuing title. And in this case, this is part of the record that's presented in the community zone. But it's, it, it has some customization creation uh, by Ex Libris. So continuing title, it's, it's linked um, to the exact CKB number, the exact MMS ID, you see CKB1109, 78, et cetera. Um, and print and electronic records, uh, we get a lot of questions about that as well. So for serials, we're using electronic records whenever they're available. Um, if, an, if an electronic record can't be retrieved, maybe it's missing an ISSN for a match point, maybe concert just simply doesn't have an electronic record yet for that title, even though it is online uh, in the community zone. We will retrieve the print one in those cases. Um, now, there is some minimal conversion going on. Um, specifically, the 008 form of item is converted to make sure that it's online so that when it's searched in the community zone, uh, it, it will show as an online record because everything is an online record in the community zone. But we are looking to create some further conversions, so uh, stay tuned about that. But for, for monographs, it's much simpler. Uh, we really just want to use electronic records only. Um, that's a, something we review when we get new vendor records. And because everything is in the community zone, it's supposed to be online only. We do ask that the uh, print identifiers only be in the 776 field. Okay, so here's a snapshot 
of um, our import process for enrichment, we use Alma imports, actually our own instance. So those of you who use your own imports um, in your network or, or institution zone, the next few slides will look very familiar. I'll try to make it understandable, even if it's not. But so we have different profiles for different providers um, that we, we schedule imports for for enrichment. So here are just a few at the top. And in addition to each provider having its own import profile, each would have its own normalization, or in other words, correction if that, if that were needed. So for example, I'm looking here at the import profile for EBC, for uh, eBook Central. Uh, this is just a, a snippet of the normalization. In this case, uh, there's um, replacing the encoding for uh, uh, inverted question mark because at some point in the past that was an issue. Um, th the second one you see under that is the 797 custom field that's in the records that says ProQuest firm. Um, we, we're removing that. That was a decision that was made together with the community zone management group advisory group again so that the record is um, provider neutral um, and this would go on but these are just a couple of examples um, and then the, the match profile so uh, I want to highlight again that the process of enrichment we're starting with a brief record that's created via title list KBAR list and then the process of enrichment is then taking that brief record and uh, importing MARC records uh, and enriching it so that it's full. And because of that, because we're starting with something and then getting something else, we always have to have a match point so the system can find the correct record to enrich. Um, and we would greatly prefer, I mean, I, I think it's, just, it's, it's easier for our system if the match point can be ISSN or ISBN. Um, so that's, that's what we're using in the majority. So here you see an eBook Central one. Uh, it's matching uh, here on ISBN mostly because these are eBooks. Here is a trickier example. Uh, this is Alexander uh, Street Press. So I, as most of you know, Alexander Street Press is one of a couple providers we have um, that, that doesn't have standard ISSN, ISBNs, uh, because it's historical, because it's video, because it's audio, etc. So uh, we have an alternate method here um, of matching on the O35 in order to make enrichment happen. And so uh, what, it's, what it's doing, it's actually a little but even more complicated than this, it's taking the ASP-specific identifiers from the linking, from the B keys, for those of you who are familiar with that. It's putting, uh, with the special extraction tool from our developers, it's putting that into the MARC record. Once that process is done, uh, it's matching on that um, O. 35. Once the O35 is in the record, it's matching on that for enrichment. So this is a, is a trickier method, um, and recently we were able to uh, load a lot of ASP records, I think 170,000, um, so uh, most of them, but we still have some gaps we're working through because of this method, so a little bit of further development and analysis here. So again, I wanted to highlight, just uh, I think going back to an earlier slide, that because we get, because we have this one record policy, um, and we're getting data from MARC data from several different vendors, um, and because we keep things from the Exlibris SFX 
AMA repositories such as identifiers. It is a merge process, so I've circled that here. In the import profile, you have the option for a merge of different fields coming together or a complete overlay. We're using merge so that we can have data from different providers so that we can keep some identifiers for linking, et cetera. Um, and each uh, merge might look different for different providers. So here I have a snippet of part of the merge rule um, for eBook Central. It's again gonna might look different for different providers. And we have separate merge rules for whether we're um, kind of taking a brief record and making it full, which would be uh, when merge not enriched. Uh, but here you see at the top, this is a snippet for what we're doing when the record is already enriched, but we have an update, we have a new source, so it's found, found a match. And so now what is it doing? And so it's replacing most of the fields here. This is just a snippet, it goes on, it, it takes the subject headings, et cetera. Um, and it's doing different things uh, based on different analysis. Um, I've circled the replace mark 100 just uh, as an example of, for you all of how we might do a correction uh, within the merge process. So you see replace 100 doesn't have anything after it, but replace mark 110 with mark 100, if exist, is under that, is, is fuller. So the one under that, 110, what that's saying is in the incoming record, if a 110 is in the incoming record, replace it, but only if it exists. So if the previous 110 um, is there, but the incoming record does not have a 110, keep the previous 110. But we're, what we're saying for the one above it is even if the 100 isn't there in the new record, uh, replace it. So if there's nothing, replace it with nothing. If there's something, replace it with something. Um, and in this particular case, a decision was made here because we ended up having, and this is actually, I believe, corrected in the community zone, but at some point we had a lot of 100s from a previous record source. Um, that were that were, had problems that needed corrections, so we were using the ebook central records uh, to correct it on a uh, an as large a scale as possible because we found that those 100s on the ebook central records were were really correct, so we wanted to replace it even if it wasn't there. So I just want to touch uh, briefly on some challenges challenges we might have. So in the import profile, um, we have multi-match handling. Some of you are familiar with this. So what this, what this means in the first half uh, here is that if there are multiple records for the same exact title, in other words, if the one record policy didn't work within our system as expected, so kind of duplicates were created, that is actually blocking the enrichment uh, currently. So that, that's an issue we encountered. So if there are multiples, that's, that's skipped right now within the system. Uh, so that, that could possibly create a gap. Um, and another way a gap might be created is if there was no brief record to match on. So if, we, if uh, the enrichment wasn't synced with the knowledge base updates, or maybe that title was not in the KBART file, the record wasn't created, a lot of different scenarios here. If, some, if, if there's no match on a brief record, then the record isn't imported, the enrichment doesn't occur. So uh, here's an example of a job report my team might look at to kind of analyze some of those gaps. This is an actual example which I, I pulled from our system of a weekly update. Uh, and you can see in this case that about 3,000 records we attempted to put in for enrichment, the great majority of them imported, but we had 40 records 
that were not imported for, didn't find a match. You could see down below. The rest, it's because of this duplicate, because of this multi-match issue. So we look to correct that through various workarounds, through some, some manual work. We have uh, some limited resources for the, that heavy manual work, though. So we also uh, are looking for some development around this to reduce it. So an example here of a success. In that, so you might imagine in that previous 3,000 record load, here is one that was successfully imported. Going back to my favorite title, 10,000 Nights, highlights from 50 years of theater going. So in this particular example, um, we had a brief record. We always start with a brief record. Then we had a record uh, from Project Muse that came made it a full record. But then we also had a record later, at a later point, from eBook Central that came in. So that's where, when a merge process started. Um, well, actually, it started even from brief to full, but where a second merge process started after it was going from full to another full. Um, and you can see that here in what I've circled in the 035. You can see that there are multiple 035s here from a couple different providers. Um, so if you look at that circle, the, the first one is a ProQuest 035 identifier. The last one, uh, the middle one is OCLC. The last one is a, is a Muse 035. Um, and that actually could be an indication for you. There might be multiple sources of data in this record, that we have multiple record, full record sources. But you could see at the top, the originating system is EBC, is eBook Central. That's going to be your indication that the last record we imported for enrichment is coming from EBC. So originating system, think of it as the last, the last, what was the last source of data? In this case, it's EBC. And just getting a closer look here into this record, um, and the last source was, was EBC in this scenario. So the 100 fields with Carlson Marvin, almost all the fields, 245, 264, that's all coming from eBook Central, the last um, record. But in this case, I've highlighted the 520. That was something that was retained from the Project Muse record, from the, the record source before that. So we kept that in according to the specific merge rule we had, we made a decision. So in this case, we made a decision to keep 520 fields, even if it's not coming in the next record source, because we got feedback from customers. Many people want these fields. The, the abstract, it's, it's good for discoverability. So in this case, even though the latest record source didn't have this, a previous record source did use so it's, it's in the record. So this record has data from both points. Uh, so that's all I had for you today in terms of the slides. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, and let's get to some Q&A. What providers that already exist in the CZ but have collections that are not in the CZ, should there be a new agreement for each collection? Oh, yes, thank you. I heard that much better. Um, so we don't have specific agreements for collections. So it's, it's per provider. Uh, so we wouldn't need a new agreement for a specific uh, new collection. We would more look at, do we already have an agreement with that provider? Um, if we do have an agreement with that provider, we would hopefully get that collections full records within the regular data fields. If there was a gap, we, we might have to reach out. But it wouldn't be a new agreement. All right. Next question is, I'm afraid this will sound rude, but I really don't mean it that way. I'm just trying to understand. We see a lot of what we consider subpar ebook and e-collection records in the community zone. How do we know if those are going to be enriched? What is the delay? How do we know when we should go ahead 
and enrich a record, or if we should wait. Will our edits be retained or overwritten? Thanks. Okay, uh, there are a few questions there. Um, I, I'll try to start with the first. Um, so I think you're, you're talking about, in terms of quality, um, the brief records in the community zone and um, how do I identify, so the brief records understandably are not viewed as high quality, how to identify whether it's going to be enriched. Um, I think that a great resource is, to, is those articles I showed. Um, is it a provider that we have records for? If we, we do have records for that provider, um, I think that you can, if it's a new title, um, that we are probably going to enrich it. Um, I, I think if there's a gap, certainly for a provider that we already have, certainly a case. Um, but if it's a, if it's a new provider, um, if it's a provider that is not on that list, then you, that's a scenario where you might want to contribute, you might want to enrich it yourself or request it to be added to the community zone. Um, the second question, you know what, I'm going to pause here because I have a couple of other people on the line. Um, we have our content product manager and content manager. Um, so if they want to chime in and introduce themselves, um, I'll pause. Uh, and Hi, so this is Rail Alstein. I'm the content product manager, and with me is Liron. Who's yeah. our uh, um, operations manager? Um, I hope you can hear us okay. Um, yeah, I think Dahlia's point is accurate. There are a few different ways that we would um, support this. So there are the providers that we're already working with, um, and those, as Dahlia said, are listed in the articles that she referenced. We also have another. Uh, platform uh, through the Idea Exchange where requests for new enrichments can be submitted. But that said, Dahlia is absolutely correct. If you see that there's a provider that we aren't currently working with, um, then I would recommend that you can contribute that content independently and have the whole community really benefit from that. Um, and you can also reach out to us regardless and ask, you know, are you maybe in talks with this provider uh, who may have recently renewed uh, their MARC records, for example, so they might have also reached out to us. And then it would indeed be a shame for you to, to uh, spend time on uh, creating that rich record uh, locally and then contributing it and so forth. So there are a few different ways that you can approach this. Um, but generally speaking, um, we do work with, with the major providers. Um, major providers who are not on our list, there's probably um, a reason for that. We may, ha we may uh, have approached them in the past. It may not be um, something that they have agreed to, uh, to do. As Dahlia said, we do definitely require um, an agreement in order to be able to add MARC records that belong to providers. Um, and that would also be a consideration I would just mention um, that when you're contributing that content, just make sure um, that your licensing also um, covers that type of contribution to the Alma Community Zone. Um, in the same way that that's a consideration that we have, we do recommend that you um, take that into account when you want to contribute um, a richer record to the community. Next question is, why is DOI not a required field in your enrichment process? Um, so I, I think that we're, we would take it if, if it was a field um, in a provider record in the, in the O24, um, for example. Um, but I think that many provider records we have don't have DOI. Um, so I'm not aware that there's a specific technical uh, reason why we would need to include that in the, in the enrichment process. But I, there could be a situation I'm not aware of. So if you would want to send more information about that, I'd love to hear more about it. Certainly, they're used in linking, though, the DOI is often in the portfolio. Uh, the next question is, we have found that missing ISSNs and records uh, can sometimes cause issues with our resolvers. 
What is the best way to get those added to your concert records? Uh, missing ISSNs added to concert records. Uh, I, th I think the best way uh, is, a, is a case, uh, I believe. Um, others on the line, please, please clarify if needed. But um, again, those ISSNs are maintained by Ex Libra staff. So um, our team would be able to correct or add ISSNs uh, through cases would be the best way. Uh, the next question is, each time we run duplicate title analysis, there are several duplicates coming from the community zone. Why are there so many community zone dupes, and how can these duplicates be avoided? Uh, good question. I, I don't work directly on the process, the knowledge base process that kind of creates new MSI, MSIDs. I believe there is some development going on to try to reduce uh, duplication right now, if others uh, want to add to that or um, explanation. Um, but I, I believe it's being looked at uh, to, to reduce. Um, and, and I also, even though I don't work, work directly, I will add, add one more thing. I think often it has to do with discrepancies in the title list, um, kind of creating duplicates, but there is some development work to reduce that that we're looking at. Uh, the next question is, when we contribute a BIP record, is it important uh, if we use field uh, 020 subfield Z instead of the 776 or vice versa? Does it have any effect on the match in Alma and Primo? So I believe the question is, if you're contributing a record, so in other words, I believe it's contributing a full record, so that would be as part of a full electronic collection, um, what is the impact of using the O2O-Z field versus 776? Um, I would have to look more into how it affects Primo in particular. Um, I, I would say to try to match the contributions to the community zone uh, standard as much as possible, though, um, when you contribute full records as part of a collection. So since we're putting identifiers, print identifiers in the 776, I think it would be ideal to match that, that standard. What it would do if it's not exactly matched in terms of Primo, I'd have to look uh, more into. Uh, our next question is, what's the time delay between when the KBART record is created and when it is enriched with the full record? What's the time delay? There could be a few different scenarios for time delays. Um, it could be that we simply don't have that record source, that provider. So um, you might just not see enrichment. It, it could be that we're having some difficulties with matching. So there might be a delay um, in terms of getting that match right, adding the identifier so that match uh, can occur. Um, it could be that it's just we haven't gotten that, that record yet from the provider, so we have to wait a week or two. It could be a duplication issue that we have to do some analysis to reduce duplication so the match um, could occur. So, you know, there are a lot of different scenarios why there might be a delay. I could just say, you know, we try to reduce it when we can in different ways, different workarounds. Uh, we have time for one more question. Uh, the question is, these are all bibliographic records for electronic resources. What about bibliographic records for physical resources? Until that is available, this is useless to me. Yeah, I mean, the community zone right now is, is just online records. Um, so it's electronic resources. So that's why we have online records in terms of the inclusion of physical records. I i don't know as much about that history. I don't know if, Rael, you would want to chime in here or, or own anything to add to this? Uh, nothing specifically, just to okay. confirm that, yes, we, the Community Zone is um, electronic resource uh, oriented. Um, physical um, records are not represented as such. Okay, thank you. Uh, 
All right, uh, we have several more questions. Uh, we have collected them and uh, we will answer those offline for everyone. And for everyone requesting links to the various Knowledge Center articles, yes, we will be providing those. Uh, and there will be a recording of this webinar posted uh, to the Ex Libris website. I'd like to thank everyone for attending. Uh, we appreciate your time. Uh, and if you have any further questions, please feel free to reach out to us at any time. Uh, and thank you very much and have a wonderful day. Thank you.